Hey Gens, Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Out and about today, unusually, I'm going to be riding my own bikes. It struck me, if you haven't uh, been a subscriber to the channel for very long, you may not be aware of the bikes that I actually own and run at present. So this is going to be a bit of a uh, good old fashioned vloggish, talking to you about the bikes I own. Stick around and stay tuned. Okay, so one of the uh, unintended consequences of doing this YouTube lark is that uh, I'm very fortunate in that I get to ride all the latest and greatest new motorcycles and in some cases I get to buy them on a fairly long term basis for a period of weeks and when I've got those bikes I like to ride the pants off them so I can get to properly know the bikes and bring you some reviews that actually mean something. But as I say, the unintended consequence of that is that I don't actually get to ride my own bikes very often. And that is the case over the last couple of weeks. I've been uh, riding all sorts of other bikes and haven't had the chance to ride mine very much. So I thought I'd put that right today. It's a relatively warm day. It's about uh, 12 degrees, so not shockingly cold. 12 degrees centigrade, that is. And as I've been out on my bikes for a while, I thought I'd come out and do a quick vlog, talk to you about my individual bikes that I own. I've currently got four in the garage, all of which I love. Just make sure they're properly warmed up, still run all right, and give you a quick overview of what I like and don't like about each machine. So first off then, is this bike, which is my brilliant Triumph Street Triple R. This is a 2012 uh, machine. So what is that, coming up to seven years old. I bought it in July 2012, brand new. Back then, this was the top of the range street triple that you could buy, 675cc, now of course there's 765. And in short, I absolutely love it. The things I love about the bike are, well, all sorts of things, but I suppose the standout features are the way it sounds and goes. I mean, it sounds fantastic with this triple engine. I've got the arrow pipes on this, with the baffles in actually, with them out there, just too loud. So I love the way it sounds when you wind it up. It's a sort of a love it or hate it sound. Some people don't like the sound of these triple engines. They've got a lot of induction noise, airbox noise. Gives it a sort of a, almost a whiny noise, which you either like or you don't. I personally love it. When you absolutely rag the bike, it howls. Particularly when you start to get it up at sort of 12,000 RPM. Normal riding like this, you're down at 3,000 RPM. But when you wind her up, she will rev way up there to the red line at uh, 14,000. So it sounds great and it goes brilliant. And this size engine, I mean, it is putting out something like 120, 125 brake horsepower when you've got the arrow cans on and the map that goes with that. So it's not exactly a low power bike and it absolutely flies. So the way it goes, the way it sounds, I love. And then uh, the other thing is it's lightweight. I don't have the figures to hand as to how much it weighs, but it's of the order of about 175 kilograms. So it's a very lightweight bike, particularly when you compare it to my uh, GS, for example, which I ride a lot. This just feels nice and light and agile in comparison. This machine, as well as the uh, arrow cans I mentioned, I had the Triumph Quick Shifter fitted, which is upshift only, but it works really beautifully. Silky smooth on this bike. But let's go down this way so I can open the bike up a bit on the main road and let you hear that engine. So yeah, the Triumph Quick Shifter, silky smooth, up only. That was a great investment. A few cosmetic tweaks like the uh, bar end mirrors, the anodized brake fluid reservoirs, things like that. And little bits and pieces I've done to the bike to make it my own. Overall, I absolutely love the bike. There's nothing that I can think of that I don't like about this bike. I'm just sort of racking my brains as to if there is anything and I just can't come up with anything. I had a work going on here. This is uh, Great Missenden where I live. And uh, of course, this is where HS2 is being built. And that's some of the works for that. HS2 being our high speed train link. Anyway. I digress, back to the Street Triple. Stuck behind this tanker, which is a bit annoying, but one of the things I love about the little Street Triple is it's got loads of power. It's just easy to nip by stuff whenever you need to. And here's that engine noise. Absolutely fabulous bike. Brakes on it are amazing. Now, I've been lucky enough to uh, ride the latest of the Street Triples, the RS. Now with a bigger engine some fancy electronics on board. This one doesn't even have ABS. This is before Euro 4. So it's a basic bike in comparison to modern day street triples. But I'll tell you what, this bike is nonetheless good for it. It's an absolutely brilliant bike. And if you fancy a street triple and you can't quite stretch to a brand new RS, which is probably something like 13, 14 grand, 
get yourself a second hand one of these even at 2012 as I say seven years old still an absolutely brilliant bike I think it looks and goes fabulously just an absolute stonking bike people ask me a lot you know am I going to sell the street triple and get something else well frankly no I just love the way it goes and I love the way it looks that wasn't a very good bit of routing I'm back at those <laughs> back at those uh, traffic lights again anyway the street triple love it and she stays okay next up then on the uh, riding my own bikes thing is this machine this is my uh, Ducati Panigale 899 now this bike is just a joy to behold I think it's one of the most beautiful bikes ever made I think that about all Panigales uh, this is the original shape this is a 2015 899 I bought it brand new in 2015 um, as I say I mainly bought it because I just love the looks of it but it rides and sounds beautifully as well it's one of these bikes that you entirely buy with your heart not with your head because it makes very little sense whatsoever having said that I went for the 899 instead of the uh, what was then the 1199 because I thought this would be a better road bike and I seldom do track days and I still think that probably is the case but when you compare this bike with uh, modern day things like the V4S uh, this is quite difficult to ride in comparison however this is the bike I've got and I absolutely love it in terms of uh, modifications to the bike, I've done one or two things. I've got the Termignoni, after you, I've got the uh, Termignoni pipes fitted, which just make it sound fantastic. Ducati and Termignoni just go together, don't they? It's got uh, a quick shifter, up only again, no auto blipper on the 899. That wasn't an extra, that came as standard. This bike does have uh, quite a lot of electronics on it. Again, not as sophisticated as its bigger engine brothers. But it does have ABS and traction control and Ducati uh, engine, whatever it's called, engine braking control, EBC, and various other things you can fiddle around with. In terms, again, of the changes, I've also done the uh, anodized brake reservoirs, as you can see here, something you look at all the time on the Ducati, or on the clutch reservoir. They look great. Oops, hit the light on full by mistake. I've got a few what I think are tasteful bits of carbon, so for example you might be able to see the carbon instruments around here. I've got a uh, different screen I've fitted, one or two other little bits of bling on the bike, but I haven't, I've tried to not go overboard on it because I think the bike looks beautiful as it is. When I bought it back in 2015 I thought I might uh, end up regretting it because it's a sports bike and it'd be uncomfortable to ride. Well, let me tell you, it's amazing how quickly you get used to this riding position first few rides I did think yeah I've made a mistake here this is going to be uncomfortable but actually you get completely used to it and I now find this a completely natural position to ride in you just get used to riding sports bikes and this is no different so what are the top things I like about it I've already said the way it looks and the way it sounds and of course the way it goes it is blisteringly fast it's something like 155 brake horsepower with the uh, Terminiones on more way more than you need on the road and it's great fun on a warm summer's day but it's probably the bike I've ridden the least. I think it's got, uh, well, looking down, 3,544 miles on it at the moment. Which isn't a lot, is it, for a bike that I bought in 2015. And I suppose out of all my bikes, this is the one I ride least. Mainly because I only use it for short blasts locally, really. It really is a classic garage queen. If the road's dodgy, weather-wise, I don't go out on it really is just safe for summer afternoons blasts around the lanes and I really must sort that out this year I'd love to do a bit of a tour on this stick a rucksack on and take it on tour and see how it goes would be great fun because it really is a lovely lovely bike again it's not perfect though there are things I don't like about it over time the brakes seem to have degraded I've tried to get them sorted out to no avail that is a bit of a known thing apparently with 899s that the brakes can be a bit sort of sponge after a while they're not terrible by any means but they're not as good as the uh, street triple I was just riding and when I first bought the bike the brakes were absolutely amazing on it so they just degraded over time I've had new pads put on it's not pads discs are fine maybe there's a leak somewhere I don't know they're not terrible they're just not as good as uh, as they were when I first bought it what else don't I like about it uh, that's probably all insurance is expensive um, but yeah, there's nothing really else about this bike that I don't like. It's uh, it's definitely one of those feel-good bikes. It's always an occasion when you ride the Ducati. Always puts a grin on my face. 
I absolutely love it. Maybe the suspension's a bit harsh. Just listen to this thing. How can you not like that? This Volvo's trying to get away from me. I'm not going to race him because I just know if I wanted to, I could blitz him. Maybe not on this road, but uh, generally I could. Just a fabulous, fabulous machine. And again, like the Street Triple, I've absolutely no intention of selling this, even though I don't ride it very often. If you need a dose of speed and general posing, this is the bike that I do it on. Absolutely love the Panigale. She's staying. So from my most powerful bike, the Panigale, to this, my least powerful bike, my uh, Honda CRF 250L. Now the Panigale, as I say, puts out something like 150, 155 bhp. This puts out something like 23, 24 bhp. So uh, very low power in comparison, but I have to tell you, this is no less fun because of it. This is the bike that proved to me you don't need massive CC and massive horsepower to have fun. In fact, out of all my bikes, this, I would say, is probably the most fun to ride. This definitely is the bike that gives me the best fun for the pound spent, no doubt about it. Now this particular machine I bought uh, brand new back in 2014. So what's that, uh, five years old now at the time of filming. Modification wise, I've done a few bits and pieces to it. I guess the major thing is I put on the FMF pipe and the Mega Bomb header, which does liberate a couple more BHP and that makes a big difference on a bike that's so low powered. Not only does it do that, but it gives it this great noise as well, which uh, normal CRF 250Ls don't have. They normally are, are pretty quiet and uh, benign sounding. But it's amazing, you stick a loud exhaust on and suddenly the bike just seems to go a lot better whether it actually does or not. It certainly seems like it does. Now, I love the fact it makes that proper dirt bike noise, although of course it really is a sort of a, well, when I say a pretend dirt bike, it's perfectly capable off-road. And the reason why I bought it is because I wanted to do a few green lanes around here. And uh, I've done all the green lanes around here and I need to do some more. There's just very few in the southeast to ride that you can ride legally. So it's a shame that I don't get to ride this bike that much off-road. It's more a quick run to the shops type bike. So much so I've even got a little top box on the back of it now, so I can carry a bit of shopping, how sad is that? But I have ridden the bike all over the place, I've ridden it in Scotland, which was uh, absolutely fantastic. I've ridden it in Northumberland, uh, and I've got plans to ride it some more this year as well in the summer. Uh, so more on that coming up, stay tuned to the channel if you're an off-road fan. What don't I like about the bike? Very few things again, which is why this bike has turned out to be a keeper. I guess the one thing I don't like about it is the tank range. The tank, as standard, has a very small range on here. Uh, something like 9,500 miles to the tank full with the standard uh, exhaust. Once I put the FMF on it, and also I've got something called uh, an EJK uh, programmer underneath the seat. It's got a electronic jet kit, I think EJK stands for. It's like a power commander. Uh, and it allows you to uh, tune the ECU. Basically, that's also killed the fuel economy. So on this particular bike, I get about 90 miles out of a full tank, so I'm forever stopping to fill it up. You can buy aftermarket bigger tanks, the service tank, for example, which I thought about doing, uh, but I've just not got around to it. So actually, although I moan about the fuel economy, or, or not the economy, the just the range on the bike, I actually quite like the way this little uh, original tank looks, so I think I'll just leave it. Other changes I've made to are I put heated grips on here. Absolute must, I ride this bike all year round. So heated grips are a good thing. And one of the two, one or two other little odds and ends as well that I've changed to the bike. I'm glad to say the bike does have a fuel gauge. As you can see, I'm gonna to need to fill up soon. There's a surprise, surprise. <laughs> and this bike uh, doesn't have much in the way of electronics. It doesn't have ABS on this. Although the current bikes uh, do, this again was before ABS was a requirement on bikes of this size. But just an absolute joy to ride again. It's, uh, I think the most important thing about motorcycles is how they make you feel. And this always puts a grin on my face, even if I'm just riding around roads like this that normally on most bikes are quite uninteresting and boring. On this bike I really enjoy it. So I recommend the CRF 250L to the house. I love the way it looks. I love the way it rides. I love how cheap it is. I love the way it puts a smile on my face. Yet again, another keeper in the TMF stable. And last but by no means least in the TMF collection is this. This is my uh, late 2013 BMW GS. This is uh, 
the 1200cc machine as was made back then uh, I say late 2013 because it is in fact the 2014 model yeah uh, so it had uh, it's not the original GS liquid cooled it was the uh, it had, had one round of upgrades and it is I guess it's the bike that I'm most known for on the channel probably because this is the bike that I do my tours on I bought this bike specifically for touring rather than off-roading although it's perfectly capable of doing that as well as my little CRF but uh, this bike, as you know, is just laden with electronics and I've lavished all sorts of love on this. <laughs> all sorts of extras, too numerous to mention, but uh, some of the key ones, I suppose, things like I've got an aftermarket heated seat on it, great for winter riding. I've got this MRA Vario screen that just kills all the turbulence. I went for all the extras when I bought it. I've got the uh, sat nav, as you can see, which is brilliant on this bike. It like uh, gives you the functionality of a TFT screen before TFTs became a thing, if you like. And that it's got all sorts of parameters you can go through here, change, set, look at, fiddle with, as well as, of course, being a GPS. It's just a cracking, cracking bike. People often ask me if I could only have one bike, which bike would it be? And without doubt and without hesitation, I always say it would be the GS. And that is because this bike is just so good at everything. Not only is it great at touring, it's brilliant if you want to throw it around. You can go riding spiritedly on this round back lanes in the summer or indeed in Spain as I have done with uh, Toro Adventure on their GS's. You can take it off road if you want to. You can ride it to work if you want to. It's just a brilliant Swiss army knife of an all rounder. And if I was only having one bike this would be it. Also got the uh, amazing quick shifter and auto blipper on here, so up and down clutchless shifts. I've installed something called the Hex Easy Can that gives me all sorts of additional electronic options. So I've got all sorts of extra lights on this bike. I've got a different horn to standard. The lights do all sorts of clever things. <laughs> I've got uh, a couple of additional USB ports installed down here instead of the standard uh, power socket that comes with the GS which is great for charging up your phone and your GoPro batteries. It's just a beautiful bike to ride. It's got the amazing suspension on this. I've got this set up in its sort of normal setting at the moment which I find just right for these sorts of right roads and I'm riding it in dynamic engine mode that just gives it a little bit more poke over the other standard modes. For such a big bike it handles beautifully. Is there anything I don't like about the bike? Uh, probably only the image thing that goes with it. For some reason people don't like GS riders, I don't know why I never got that. I find that people don't wave at me as much when I'm riding this bike compared to my others. And people tend to class GS riders in a group a bit like they do with Harley riders or people who ride scooters, I don't know what it is, we're all on two wheels. It doesn't matter to me what you ride, I like all bikes. But I particularly like the big old BMW GS. Fabulous bit of kit. Okay, so there we go. That's uh, a very quick walk through the four bikes that I own and ride at the moment. As you've probably gathered, I've got no imminent plans to change any of them. I love riding new bikes that are out on the market. But as yet, there are very few that have tickled my fancy. In fact, none that have tickled my fancy enough to make me want to swap out one of my bikes. What I'm more likely to do is add to my uh, collection rather than swap out. I'm more of a collector than a swapper. I like to do my research thoroughly, then buy the best bikes I absolutely can and then run them forever, and that's what I intend to do with these four. All right, that's it for now. Hope you've enjoyed that little look at my bikes. Hope you're gonna get out to ride yours soon. Here in Blighty, technically it's now springtime. We've just passed the spring equinox. The weather should start to get warmer and uh, we should start to get some of those excellent biking days. Let's hope we're going to have as good a summer as we did last year as far as biking is concerned. Right, that's it for now. Look forward to speaking to you again next time. Until then, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio.